Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen, and we live in him. Alleluia. Would you stand, if you're able, and join me in the call to worship? Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Open the gates of justice and righteousness that we may give thanks to God. We are called to do justice and love kindness. Today is the day of celebration of grace. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Will you join me in singing hymn number 302? We're going to sing verses 1 through 4 of Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
try something different today, so you're going to have to help me out, okay? Oh, Ainsley, there you are. Oh. Okay, do you need help with your shoe, bud? You good? when we're done, okay? They can't go home. I do have an egg you're gonna take home with, with you, but these are not it. And if I have more tw than 12 people here, I'm... Okay, I'm gonna give you a special color. Don't open it yet, okay? Alex, Ryan, Chase, See, I got it right today. I'm so excited. <laughs> Lydia. Mm. Kyle. And Ainsley. Okay, now we don't open them yet. And I'm going to tell you a story. And I'm going to tell you a story using the eggs. The only <coughs> thing is, I need those. <laughs> Because the print in the book was small. See, we would have had 12. If Olivia came over for children's time, we would have had 12. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. How's everybody this morning? Good. It is good to see all of you. It is absolutely wonderful to have you here in church with us. And... I'm glad that y'all brought your families with you because it's good to see everybody. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a story, and it's going to be the story of Easter week, but it's going to go according, and I did not give the eggs out in any special order, so you're going to have to pay attention. So the first person I need to open their egg is the person with the blue egg. And what's in your blue egg, Isaac? A donkey. A donkey. <laughs> He's a wild donkey this morning. Do you know what? In Jesus' time, most people walked everywhere. Sometimes kings might have rode on horses, but people would stop what they were doing and watch as the king rode by. On the day that Jesus rode into their city, the people were thrilled to see him. He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. They believed that he was their new king who had come to save them and to fulfill their lives with joy. The people showed their happiness by spreading tree branches. Those of you that were here last week, we talked about spreading palms and even pieces of their clo clothing on the, on the ground. That was the way that they honored Jesus. So who has the light pink egg? Mm -hmm. I think that would be you, Kyle. And what's in there? Coins. Silver coins. Not everyone was happy to have Jesus as their king. Some people only pretended to be happy. But on the inside, they really didn't want anything to do with him. I find that hard to believe. But one of those people was a man named Judas. Some other men hated Jesus so much that they wanted to kill him. But they needed the help of someone who could get them closer to Jesus. Because Judas was a pretender, and because he was greedy for money, he told these men that he would help them find Jesus if they gave him 30 silver coins. So that's why Kyle's egg had 30 silver coins in it. How about a light purple purple egg? I think Leah. Leah. What have you got in there? What is it? A cup. A cup. Jeez. Now, you've all been here when we had communion, right? And 
on communion, we are remembering when Jesus had the first communion with his disciples. He had a cup, and he said, when you drink from this cup, remember me. Remember me. And that's what I say every time we do communion, that we're remembering Jesus. Okay, I need orange. You want to tell us what's in it? There's two oranges. Oh, light or dark. Oh, dear. <laughs> what's in it, Bree? Oh, Bree. Okay. <laughs> okay, show, show everybody. If you can show them what it is, it's praying hands after... Jesus had dinner with his disciples. They went to a garden. He asked them to pray while he went further on in the garden to pray. He began to be sad, and he was sad about what was going to happen to him. Jesus was willing to die, for he once said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Jesus knew he was going to die, and he was dying a death on a cross. You know, and I know this is something I tell you all the time, when you're afraid or sad, don't ever forget that you can pray because Jesus did exactly that. He went in the garden and he prayed. Okay. A green egg. Alex, I'm not sure if it's you or me. Up oh, to you. What have you got in there? A, a rope. It's a whip. Oh. A whip. When Jesus finished praying in the garden, Judas, who had betrayed him, brought the guards and they arrested Jesus. Even though Jesus hadn't done anything wrong, they arrested Jesus. They didn't want him to continue teaching. So they arrested him. And they used a whip and they they actually hit him with the whip. They injured Jesus before he went to the cross. Okay. How many yellows do we have? Okay. Macy, you're up. What's your back? A rooster. One of one of Jesus' disciples, Peter told Jesus that he would always follow Jesus. He would always, always be with him. But what happened was Jesus denied knowing Jesus. Jesus, or Peter, Peter denied knowing Jesus. <laughs> and after he denied him three times, the rooster crowed. And that's why Macy has a rooster to remind us that Peter, he meant well, but he didn't do very well that day, and he did deny Jesus three times. Okay. Is there somebody with a light orange? I think that would be you, Kennedy. And that looks like a crown of thrones. Mm -hmm. And what the guards did was they made a crown of crown of thorns. Oh my gosh, Carol. Okay. A crown of thorns. And after Jesus had been whipped with what Alex had in his egg, the soldiers took branches from thorns and they twisted them into shape, into the shape of a crown, and they put it on Jesus' head. So that was another injury to Jesus. And again, Jesus bled. <coughs> you know, Jesus could have stopped these people from hurting him. He could have stopped them, but he didn't. He let them continue. Because even though he hadn't done anything wrong, he hadn't sinned, Jesus was taking the punishment for everyone else. Jesus was taking the punishment for all of us. Okay. I think nobody else has light green today. I guess I'm light green. 
So we've got, in this light green egg, that I can't get unwrapped, we have a cross made out of nails. Can you see that? That's cool. <coughs> the soldiers took Jesus to the top of the hill outside the city, and they used nails much bigger than this. They used nails bigger than this, and they, they put him on a cross using nails. <coughs> and the Bible tells us that Jesus was stronger than any man. And the soldiers couldn't have killed Jesus if he hadn't let them. Because, <coughs> Macy, I'm going to say it just because I have to, because God loves us so much. Right, Macy? Okay, you, you would have been disappointed if I hadn't said that. <laughs> God loves us so much that Jesus died for us. Okay. Purple egg. Okay, Ryan. A spear. Two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on either side of Jesus. When the soldiers came to check on the three men on the crosses, Jesus was already dead. Just to make sure, though, one of the soldiers took a spear and he stabbed Jesus in the side. It's sad to think that Jesus died and he, he died in such a horrible way. But remember, Jesus gave up his life because of his love for all of us. Okay, light blue. And what have you got, Chase? A piece of cloth? A piece of cloth. After Jesus died, a man named Joseph asked if he could bury him. This was a very brave and loving thing for Joseph to do. Remember, the men who killed Jesus did not really believe he was the Son of God, but Joseph did believe, and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. Joseph knew that this might get him in trouble, but he was brave, and he asked for permission Jesus wrapped the body, that's why Chase's egg had a piece of cloth in it, and he buried him in a tomb. It was a tomb, like a, like a cave. And then Joseph went away very sad, because Jesus was dead, and Joseph didn't know what was going to happen next. So who has a pink egg? I'm thinking that must be Ella. And what have you got, Ella? Oh, yours is wrapped too. I should have checked these. I think it's a rock. It's a rock. You're yeah. absolutely right. There was a rock that was rolled in front of Jesus' tomb, and it was much better, bigger than the stone in Ella's egg. After Jesus was buried, special soldiers were assigned to stand guard at the tomb. But these men were no match for God's angel. It took just one angel to roll that stone away. And we know that that angel got his strength from God. And I'm thinking, is there anybody except Ainsley that hasn't opened their egg yet? Is everybody else open to their egg? Ainsley, what have you got in that egg? Nothing! <laughs> oh, oh, so oh, honey! But you know what? After church, <laughs> I've got to redeem myself. Okay, these are the eggs. These are the eggs that 
you'll be able to keep, okay? So Ainsley, you pick one, honey. my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. Give our joyous songs of victory in the thanks of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord has chastened me sorely but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. 
It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. I'm going to ask Chase if he would come up and um, and read our scripture from, from John today. <coughs> Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw a linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw a linen cloth lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been, that was, that had been on Jesus' head. But it wasn't with the other cloth. But, but the, take your time. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but but the one but with four other his own clothes. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw it and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. Jesus appeared to Mary. Mary stood outside near the tomb, crying as she cried. She bent down to look into the tomb. She saw, she saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head, one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. As soon as she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. He turned and said to him, Aramaic. Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and they told and she told them what he said to her. Thank you, Chase. It was Easter morning. Of course, they didn't call it Easter then. <coughs> Nobody knew the significance, and heavens, they didn't know that over 2,000 years later, we'd still be celebrating this day. But this is really, is, in my book, this is one of the big days of the year. It really is. It's probably the biggest in my book. There, Mary was going to the garden. She went to the garden to finish taking care of Jesus' body. But you know what? I have to wonder, didn't she think about the fact that the last she had been at the garden at the tomb, that there was a stone in front of that cave? Just like we talked about with the children this morning, there was a stone that had been specially made. It wasn't round. It had a flat bottom, so it didn't just roll. But Mary, undeterred, was going 
to take care of Jesus' body. And when she got there, she saw that the stone had been rolled away. The stone had been rolled away. And she was really rather upset. She didn't even go much further than that, except she saw the stone was gone. So she ran back down the hill. Actually, that's the way I'm picturing it. I don't know if it was a hill or not. She ran back down to Simon Peter and the other disciple and said, the Lord has been taken from the tomb. And we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciples ran ahead of her. They went back. Peter was the first to arrive at that tomb. And he bent down to take a look. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths there. And he saw the face cloth. And it was separate from the others that were crumpled on the table. It was folded. It was folded and it was just neatly put by itself. I'm told that in Jewish tradition, if somebody gets up from the table and folds their napkin and leaves it at their place, that that means I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Was that what Jesus was saying? I believe so. The disciples were just, they couldn't imagine. They couldn't imagine what had happened. They had come back to the grave and the body was gone. The disciples, the two, two men just returned to where they were staying. They didn't stay with Mary, who was in the garden outside the tomb. She cried. She bent down to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels, one at either end. One at the, where Jesus' head would have been and one where his feet would have been. And the angel said to her, why are you crying? And her reply was, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she said this, she turned around. She didn't know anybody else was in the garden. She turned around and saw a man standing there, and she thought, oh, this is the gardener. He'll know where they put the body. And Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. And immediately, Mary knew that it was Jesus. She said, Rabboni, which means teacher. She recognized him immediately. Don't you love it when somebody knows you by name? Don't you love it when you go somewhere and maybe you haven't seen somebody in a while and they call you by name? Now, the opposite of that is when you go somewhere, see somebody that you've known for years, and you have no idea what their name is. And I think we've all been there. But, as soon as Jesus said Mary's name, she knew it was Jesus. She knew it was Jesus, and that he was there, but he, he wasn't dead anymore. He was standing there talking to her. And Jesus said, don't hold on to me. I haven't gone up to my father yet. Don't hold on to me. Can't you imagine her first reaction was just to grab him and give him a big hug? Like, I don't know if they were huggers in that day and age like I am. But at any rate, that's my, that was the way I'm figuring Mary would act. But no, in this case, Jesus said, no, I haven't gone to my father yet. But can you imagine when Mary got back to the disciples and said to them, I have seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord. The cave was empty. Even I know Ainsley was terribly disappointed when that egg was empty. But what we're celebrating today is that, that Jesus wasn't in the tomb. 
Jesus had risen. He rose and had eternal life. We're so thankful. We're so thankful for that on this, on this joyous Easter day. Worshiping here at Loyalville this morning, what a wonderful opportunity it is for us to share the love of God. Sometimes we need a little reminder. Sometimes we need to review everything that happened in, in Holy Week. And I, I really thought the eggs did a pretty good job of that. But we need to be reminded that Jesus, even though he died a horrible death, rose again. And he rose again for us. He rose for each and every one of us. And I'm very thankful for that. When Mary left the garden, she went back to the disciples and said to them, I have seen the Lord. Can you imagine what they thought? Do you think maybe they thought she was a little crazy? You've seen the Lord? We were there. The cave was empty. But Mary had seen the Lord and knew that her Lord was alive. She couldn't touch him but she knew he was alive. Oh, what a day that was. What a day that was for Mary. What a day that was for the disciples. But what a day that was for all of us that continue to worship the risen Christ who died on the day that we call Good Friday and who rose, who rose again on Easter Sunday. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we all have eternal life. Are we still looking for an empty tomb? I don't think so. I think that we're here because we know the tomb is empty. But Jesus has gone on before us to give us eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for sending your son to walk among the people of his time. We thank you for you being in our midst every day of our lives. And Lord, I just thank you that we can worship together in this place on this Easter morning. Amen. Would you join me, please, in our Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page <clears throat> Excuse me. 881 in the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. and concerns this morning. Frank. I praise the great joy to see how the Loyalist Church is so strong even despite the attacks on Christianity. Absolutely, Frank. I was, I was thinking what a joy it is to see each and every one of you this morning. Kathy. Joy well, is not raining. Exactly, <laughs> yes. It's a nice day in the neighbor. A little chilly, but I'm not going to complain about having to wear my winter coat. <laughs> my friend Don made it home. Mm -hmm. Florida. Yes. Do we have other joys in town? I have another joy. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sister. That 
is a joy. It is a joy to see each and every one of you. What other joys and concerns do we have this morning? You know what? Macy, was your art teacher having surgery? Yeah. Is she, surgery's over? Everything good? Okay, and her name was Mickey. Okay. Don't ask me my name now. <laughs> Do we have others? Yes, for our family in Sweet Valley that lost their home last year. Yes. Yes. Carlos Pondro? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you this morning with joy. We come to you with the joy of, of your risen son. We thank you. We thank you for being able to celebrate on Easter Sunday. And, and Lord, it is just wonderful to, um, to see everyone here. What a blessing it is. And Lord, I, I thank you again for your son. I thank you for the good things that have happened this week or in the past weeks. I thank you that Mickey's surgery went well. I thank you that um, Don and Kate are home from Florida. And we pray for Don that his, his health continues to improve. Lord, we pray for, for the family in Sweet Valley that lost their home to fire this morning. And Lord, if, if we can help them out as a church, Lord, I pray that we will be able to, that we'll do that. Lord, I, I pray for others that are dealing with illness, that are dealing with loss, that are dealing with waiting. That waiting, waiting for doctor's appointments, waiting for procedures, waiting to hear whatever it is that we might be waiting for this morning. I pray that you can help us to just be patient. Lord, I thank you that Ainsley brought her little sister with her to church this morning. Thankful to, to see their whole family here. Lord, what a blessing it is to hear a baby in church. It's a wonderful blessing. And Lord, thank you. Lord, we, we pray for all those concerns that are on our minds that maybe we haven't mentioned this morning, because I have a feeling there might be a few. Whatever it is, whatever it might be, Lord, hear our prayer. And may we not be afraid to come to you in prayer, just as Jesus went to the garden. Jesus went to the garden to pray. Help us to take time out of our busy schedules to, to be in prayer with you. Lord, you bless us in so many ways, and we're so thankful. Lord, I'm thankful that Chase was able to, that Chase read the scripture this morning. I'm very thankful for my my buddy Ed that is here and um, keeps me on track as far as the music is concerned. For that, Lord, I am truly thankful, and I know every person in this congregation is. Lord, I I just thank you for Ed's faithfulness to this ministry at Loyalville Church and, and Huntsville. Lord, I, I pray that you will just bless each and every one of us with a wonderful Easter, with a wonderful day of celebration of your death and resurrection. Lord, bless us and be with us as we pray, pray our prayer of confession this morning. Holy God, we are tired and a little terrified. We don't understand the confusing world around us. Sometimes it's easier to live in darkness than to walk toward the light. Forgive us. Open our eyes to see your presence among us. Open our hearts to perceive the risen Christ walking toward us. Fill our hearts with amazement, wonder, and hope. In your holy name, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us.
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God has blessed us in so many ways, I'm going to ask Macy and Bree and Isaac to come up and take, take, take collection this morning. Thanks, O God, for you are good. You've been our help and our hope, calling us to be help and hope for the world. You live among us, calling us to share life and love with all creation. Bless the gifts that we bring this morning, that they may be signs of your life, hope, and love. Amen. Would you, would you please Remain standing and join me in hymn number 322, Up From the Grave He Arose.
risen Christ. Go and live as the risen children of God. Go and be Easter people, people filled with hope and life and love for all the world. Go in the peace, love, hope, and joy of Jesus. Amen.